Hello, welcome. In this short video, let us look at the relation between multiplication of the DFTs versus the circular convolution in time domain. That is, we are going to look at the following theorem. So, the theorem can be stated as follows. Given two finite duration signals to finite duration signals for basically sequences x1 of n and x2 of n and their corresponding DFTs defined as x1 of k equal to the sum over n equal to 0 to n minus 1 x1 of n e power minus j 2 pi n k or capital N and similarly x2 of k that is the DFT of the second sequence is given by the sum n equal to 0 to n minus 1 x2 of n e power minus j 2 pi n k over capital N. Here the value of k is from 0 to n minus 1. So n is obviously the length of the sequence. So given this uh, x1 of n and x2 of n and their corresponding DFTs, so the theorem basically states that the multiplication of these two uh, DFTs is equivalent to circular convolution of these two sequences in time domain. Now let us look at the proof for this theorem. Let us define a new DFT, a new DFT x3 of k which is basically the product of x1 of k and x2 of k that is the multiplication uh, in frequency domain and of course the values of k are from 0 to n minus 1. Now, we can determine the IDFT that is inverse DFT discrete Fourier transform of x3 of k by using the definition that is x3 of m is equal to 1 by n summation over k equal to 0 to n minus 1 x3 of k e power j 2 pi m k over capital N. So that is the definition of IDFT. Now x3 of k is the product of these two DFTs. So we have 1 by n summation over k equal to 0 to n minus 1 x1 of k x2 of k e power j 2 pi m k over capital N. Now by using the definitions of x1 of k and x2 of k uh, from the theorem itself we can rewrite this x3 of m as follows that is x3 of m will be equal to 1 by n and then we have triple sum that is summation over n l and k. We have triple sum that is summation over k, summation over n, summation over l, x1 of n, e power minus j 2 pi n k over capital N that is the definition of x1 of k and then we have x1 of x2 of l, x, that is definition of x2 of k uh, given by x2 of l e power minus j 2 pi l k over n and finally e power j 2 pi m k over capital N. So that is the final expansion of x3 of m. Now let us try to simplify this one. That is by gathering all the terms that consist of this exponential function we can rewrite this uh, sum as follows that is 1 by n and then exchanging the sums that is writing n and l first and then we have all the terms consisting of k e power j 2 pi into m minus n minus l into k by n x1 of n and x2 of l. So that is the simplified version of the sum. Now let a is equal to e power j 2 pi m minus n minus l by n. Then this summation, then this summation basically becomes, that is the summation can be written as summation over k a power k and since value of a is an exponential a complex exponential uh, its absolute value is equal to 1 so the summation will be equal to 1 minus a power n by 1 minus a that is as long as a is not equal to 1 this is true that is this will be equal to 1 minus a power n by 1 minus a so however since m n and l and n all these terms are basically integers this value a that is exponential j 2 pi uh, m minus n minus l uh, divided by n and then whole power n 
this value that is a power n is actually going to be equal to 1 as long as m minus n minus l is not a multiple of n so that means this value if we, this value a is not equal to 1 then this value uh, is equal to that is a power n is equal to 1 and then the summation over k a power k 0 however if m minus n minus l is a multiple that is a multiple of n that is m minus l, n minus l is equal to p into n or in other words l is equal to m minus n mod n that is m minus n mod n that is l is actually a, uh, m minus n mod n then what happens is the value of a becomes 1 and the sum becomes equal to n that is the sum becomes n because if a is equal to 1 then sum is basically uh, summation of n once so it is equal to n therefore therefore the sum over k a power k that is a is nothing but our exponential of j 2 pi m minus n minus l by capital so this summation is equal to capital n whenever the value l is m minus n mod n and it is equal to 0 otherwise that is it is equal to 0 when l is not a uh, equal to m minus n mod n or in other words the difference that is m minus n minus l is not a multiple of n so that is the uh, inf um, that is the effect now um, that is the conclusion next so because of this this summation can be rewritten that is since this summation is basically going to be equal to n for only those values of l which are m minus n mod n and zero uh, elsewhere so we can simplify the sum drastically so that is x3 of m becomes 1 by n summation over n and then we have x1 of n and then x2 of l becomes x2 of m minus n mod n and whenever l is equal to this value the sum is equal to n and for all other values of l it is 0 so we ignore all the other terms so therefore x3 of m that is the sequence is equal to summation over n that is n should be equal to 0 to n minus 1 x1 of n and then x2 of m minus n mod n and then upon close examination of this summation it is by definition the circular convolution of the sequences x1 of n and x2 of n therefore x1 of n circular convolution with x2 of n is equivalent with the product of their corresponding dfts so to summarize we have looked at the theorem related to multiplication of dfts in frequency domain versus circular convolution in time domain the theorem is stated as follows given two sequences x1 of n and x2 of n and their corresponding dfts x1 of k and x2 of k then uh, the theorem basically states that the circular convolution of the two signals theorem basically states that the circular convolution of the two signals is equivalent to multiplications of their corresponding dfts and, now, and then we look at the proof that is we define a new sequence x3 of k that is a dft sequence which is the product of corresponding dfts and then we find the inverse dft of x3 of k by using the definition and then we substitute the definition of x3 of k and the corresponding definitions of x1 of k and x2 of k uh, subsequently and then x3 of m becomes a triple sum consisting of x1 of n x2 of l and an exponential term and then we uh, regather and then we gather the terms consisting of this exponential term the complex exponential term and then we found that this summation can be actually simplified so if you say a is equal to this exponential e power j 2 pi m minus n minus l upon n then the summation will become equal to n whenever l is a uh, m minus n mod n otherwise it will be zero so based on this result we found that x3 of m is indeed the circular convolution between x1 of n and x2 of n Therefore, the circular convolution between x1 of n and x2 of n is equivalent to multiplication of the corresponding DFT. Thanks for watching.